So when we bring it all together, going back to where we started this week off in five minutes to better lighting, you can check the whole playlist out here, by the way, if you're new here. And if you are new here, be sure to subscribe so you get the latest. Uh, but if we go back to the start of this week, um, one of the things we talked about was intensity, focus, color, beam, and, and what that all means. How we can change up our look on stage by bringing the intensity of various lights up or down, right? By going ahead and changing where these lights are pointed for focus, or even just as we turn things on and off, it changes where people's focus are, right? Or as we move them. Then we went ahead and we talked about the color. We talked about how changing colors, how using different combinations of colors, who I do like a good blue violet look, how that can affect our look on stage. And then we talked about doing things like putting in gobos and adding those to our lights, right? And so as we get through all that, now it's really time to talk about putting it all together. And I'm going to keep this simple. I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it sweet. Because at the end of the day, as we've been talking about here, we can go from something real simple within a given song and then as we follow the music, as we follow what the performers on stage are doing, we can in an instant make it much different, right? We could bring up our front and back light again, going from just having these guys on whoop, to, uh, to having these on. And we can go ahead even in just a moment's time and completely change our look, right? Move things around, um, you know, add effects to it. And there are so many really great options as to what we can do to change up our show. And so kind of my charge to you or my, um, my goal here and what I want to teach you today and what I want to focus on here is that I want to circle back to where we started, okay? So when you're putting it all together, when you're putting together your show and when you're in the moment, when you're at a lighting console or a PC and you're playing back the lights for a band, a DJ, a worship set, whatever, if you want to make a little bit of a change on stage, just change one of these things, right? Just go ahead and keep it simple. But if you want to make a big difference on stage, then go ahead, you know, change the color, change the position, change the beam, change everything all up at once or within a short time, if that's what the music does. And then you're going to be able as well to see that change on with the lights so that the lights are matching the music. That's going to be our goal all the time is just to put these things together. And as we change up different parts of our set, we always want to follow what the band is doing. Okay. And so that's what I'm going to leave you here with today is that some of the most powerful things we can do are simple. In fact, as, as lighting people, as people who work with lighting um, and who are watching the lighting, you know, it, it kind of goes along the same uh, thing that audio guys say. And one of the things I've heard audio guys say time and time again is no one goes home humming the kick drum. Okay. And that principle means that basically you're the only person probably in the room who's paying such attention to the, the minute details of the lighting. Everybody else is paying more to the overall, to how it makes them feel, how it shapes the room, etc. Okay. And so don't worry so much about, you know, Hey, even though I've said this, I just changed color. Let me change something different. Now let me change something different. At the end of the day, these are all guidelines and everything I've talked about here are ways to get you thinking ways to get you trying new things. But at the end of the day, it's not about, you know, earning an A plus on your learn stage lighting test. Um, which isn't something that exists, but it's not about, you know, doing exactly what I say. It's about trying things. It's about using these principles that we've laid forward in the past like seven days and using them in your lighting so that 
you're able to create that awe for your audiences so that you're able to do something that feels so in sync with what the band's doing that they call you back again and again and, and they want to use you and you can enjoy making the best light show possible. Okay, guys? So, hey, thank you so much for watching so far. Like I mentioned, be sure to subscribe here. And also, if you've enjoyed what I've been putting down, these videos take some more time to produce, but I think it's worth it. And I'm, uh, I really need your support on Patreon. Though the, For those of you that can help support even just a few bucks a month, um, you're going to you maybe get a little access to something extra there, but also you're going to be supporting. And more importantly, you'll be supporting all the free content that I'm putting out here videos, podcasts, and whatever else, and helping me to do more complex and higher quality stuff into the future. So ultimately, we can help so many people create great lighting. In our next video, we're going to head into part three. We're going to talk about setting up our consoles for success and really getting into the, the brain of how a console works so that you can get beyond it and create lighting effortlessly without focusing on features and stuff like that inside a console. So you don't want to miss that. Be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow. Thanks.